हेलो किड्स एंड वेलकम टू द एज ऑफ मशीन्स द एज इन विच वी लिव इज कॉल्ड एज द एज ऑफ मशीन्स आई एम श्योर इट्स एक्सप्लेन बिकॉज वी यूज सो मेनी मशीन्स अराउंड अस सो दिस एरा इन विच वी आर लिविंग इन टूडे इज कॉल्ड इज द एज ऑफ मशीन्स सो वॉट इज अ मशीन a machine is a tool that makes our work easier so whatever work you do if there is something that is making it easier it is a machine example for this is a bottle opener which makes it easier for us to open soft drink bottles and a hand cart which we use in supermarkets to pick up things so we use machines all the time and it is very very hard to imagine our lives without machine can you just think for a second if all the machines around you were to disappear do you think you can live a simple and happy life i think it's next to impossible so in this chapter let us travel back in time and see how we ended up where we are today so let's first talk about how the early men lived when we see the early stone tools millions of years ago the early man lived without any machines because machines didn't exist back then so he lived without any machines and they used their intelligence and first made stone tools to hunt so if you can see this right here these were stone tools that they carved to make pointy edges which made it easier for them to hunt and then the progress to better metal tools came a lot later it was a very slow progress and took nearly thousands of years from the early stone tools but recently humans have made such a rapid progress and most of the tools that we use today have been developed in just 300 years so you can imagine the difference between a thousand years for a development and just 300 years for rapid development so whatever tools we use today have been developed in just 300 years now the whole process of tools completely changed with the discovery of metals so if you see the discovery of metal the first metal to be discovered was copper and it was used widely in asia to make better tools 8000 years ago so this are just simple copper tools that were carved out now these were used for hunting and various other purposes the second metal that was discovered was bronze so bronze was the second metal to be discovered and it was made by mixing copper and tin and comparatively it was harder than copper so they started using it now if you see the discovery of bronze it was discovered at different times in different parts of the world but the earliest recorded usage of bronze dates back to nearly 6000 years ago so these were evidences that 6000 years ago bronze was used this here are bronze tools if you see it is a lot better than the copper tools so there was improvement even in the shape and the structure of tools then came iron now the discovery of iron was a very important landmark in history if you see it is a lot harder than copper and bronze so here we have iron tools if you notice iron tools they are pretty strong and they are sturdy and if you see the structure it is a lot more clear and well cut when compared to these two so these were much much better so the discovery of iron helped humans progress faster and how exactly did they use these tools let us see the uses of iron tools the uses of iron tools first they used it to make much better tools and weapons then they used iron to cut down trees and clear out forests so that they could cultivate something and use agriculture to grow crops and then they used it again for hunting animals which was made easier because they were much sharper more sturdy and a lot more stronger so this was about the discovery of metals now we will talk a little bit about transport let us talk about wheels carts and boats now we do not know the exact time frame of when exactly a wheel was invented 
But we know that the use of carts which run on wheels were being used nearly 5,000 years ago. So 5,000 years ago, there were carts run by wheels that were used. Now the early carts were either pulled by humans and later they started domesticating animals and they used animals to run their carts. More on this you will study in the chapter of transport. Now if you see early man's life, the early men used rafts and rowboats and then they learned how to navigate with the force of wind using sailboats. So on a raft they generally would use their own muscle power to move same with the rowboat where they used a little bit of the water current and the speed of the water to navigate then they saw that the winds can also help them move and they developed a sailboat which uses wind energy to move around so this was about how wheels carts and boats came into existence then we had the whole revolution in the field of transportation with the coming in of the steam engine so let us talk about the steam engine and the industrial revolution. Now till about 300 years ago, people used only the power of their muscle or animal power or the force of wind and water to navigate around and travel on land. But the invention of the steam engine revolutionized life. They now had much powerful force to run their machines. So because of this faster transport, building and running of big machines was done by the help of steam engines which gave a tremendous boost to the industrial sector so as you can see here this is nothing but steam engines which are helping factories to run now if you see earlier goods were made with hand by people at their own homes using simple techniques and simple tools but with the coming of the steam engines, people started using it in factories and goods could be produced in very large quantities. And people observed that these goods were a lot more cheaper and better quality and many people started to buy these goods. And because of this, the demand for machine made goods started becoming more and more popular. And this led to what we call as the factory system. So they started establishing factories where goods could be made. So big factories with very large machines came up in cities and many people from the nearby villages started coming to the cities to work at these factories. So in turn, because of this, the cities grew larger and larger. So this explains how some of the cities even today have very large factories which have workers coming from the nearby settlements. Now, when you see industrial revolution, the significant change from handmade goods to machine made goods which began in Britain in the 18th century is what we call as industrial revolution. So suddenly from handmade goods people started buying machine made goods and because of this revolution large scale changes was brought into our economy society as well as culture. So this industrial revolution influenced our economy, society as well as the culture. So we can rightly say that the invention of steam engine made industrial revolution possible. Without the steam engine, we wouldn't have had the industrial revolution. Now let us look a little into the sources of energy for these steam engines. Now when you look at sources of energy, we will talk about three different main sources of energy. First of them is coal. Now when you see coal, coal was the first fuel to be used in steam engine to produce steam. And it was obtained from mines or little caves and still it is an important source of energy even today. So this here is coal and this is a coal mine from which miners are taking the coal deposits. Now a large amount of coal is used in power plants to produce electricity. Now when you see coal, it is formed in nature from dead trees and it doesn't just happen in one or two days, it takes about millions of years for the formation of coal. And the amount of coal that we find on earth is limited and researchers say that it might last us only about another 250 years before we run out of coal altogether. 
So this is about the first source of energy, which is coal. Now, as man started developing, there was discovery of another source of energy, which we call as petroleum. Now, when we see petroleum, this is another source of energy, which is found deep within the earth. And we get fuel like petrol, kerosene and diesel from petroleum. So this here is petroleum. It's also called as crude oil and it is black in color and it's like this. And when we refine this crude oil or petroleum, we will get petrol, kerosene and diesel. And I'm sure you already know where we use this. We use it in engines and these engines were found to be more efficient than steam engine. So people started replacing these fuels in steam engines. And again, this resource is also limited and petroleum might be exhausted in another 100 years. We'll now talk about the third source of energy, which is electricity. Today, electricity is used to run factories. And nearly 200 years ago, a person called as Alessandro Volta was the first person to make a small battery which produced electric current in a wire and later generators were made to produce power. So this here is Alessandro's battery which he developed which led to the development of generators. Now apart from this we use fuels like coal, diesel, petrol or even natural gas to run generators. Now a very very important thing that we have to remember is hydroelectricity where we can use the force of flowing water from a river to generate electricity so if you can see this picture here a reservoir or a river water is stored and it is allowed to pass through the dam which turns the turbines because of the force of water we have a wheel or a turbine here and this water force makes the turbines turn very rapidly because of this rapid motion of turbines we are able to generate electricity which we are going to store in the generator and pass it on to nearby cities and villages so this is how electricity or hydroelectricity is produced now this is mainly done by dams which are built across the rivers which will produce hydroelectricity so if you see here, this is a dam right here. So water is stored in the reservoir and whenever there is need for electricity, it is allowed to pass from here, which turns the turbines and produces electricity that is stored and transmitted from this portion. This is about the main sources of energy. Now, we already saw that coal and petroleum were limited sources and we are going to run out of them very, very soon. So we have to think about alternate sources of energy. So when we look at alternate sources of energy, besides the fact that we have limited resources of fuel on Earth, fuel also causes a large amount of pollution and it causes global warming when they burn. So because of this, scientists had to think about creating alternate sources of energy so that such problems do not arise. So they have come up with a few examples like atomic energy, solar energy, wind energy and using energy from flowing water like we already saw under hydro energy. So this here is solar energy and this here is windmills which uses wind energy to create electricity. And we do this in a hope that these resources will be used more and more in the future and we do not have to face problems of global warming and pollution. Now with this we come to the end of the chapter Age of Machines. Let us do a quick recap. We spoke about the early stone tools that man used before the age of the metals and then we spoke about the discovery of metals. We saw that metals were discovered in the order of copper, bronze and iron with copper being the first, second is bronze and third is iron. We remember this with C, B, I as short form. And then we spoke about how the invention of wheel changed everything and we had carts and then we had boats and sailboats and things like that. And then we spoke about how steam engine revolutionized transport and because of steam engine we had the industrial revolution which led to what we call as the factory system where people shifted from using handmade goods to machine made goods. 
Then we saw the different sources of energy which, which replace the steam engines. Like we saw the example of coal, we saw the example of petroleum and we saw that refining of petroleum gave us petrol, kerosene and diesel. Then we spoke about hydroelectricity under electricity. We even spoke about Alessandro and how he developed his first battery. And lastly, we saw because the resources on Earth are limited, we have to come up with alternate sources of energy. And a few of them we think would be atomic energy, solar energy, wind energy, and even energy from flowing water, which is nothing but hydro energy. And with this, we finish the chapter. If you have any doubts, please get back to us. Thank you.